when you first told me that Catherine was going to have this big curly red hair, I remember thinking, <laughs> I, I'm here for it, but I have no idea how this is going to look. Yeah. And then when I saw it, I thought, this is it. Like, it is just it the so excess beautiful. of the 80s and so romantic, yeah. too. That color is just, like, beautiful. Lisa Swallows is her name, is this girl who isn't heard. She doesn't speak up. She doesn't love herself very much. She doesn't think she matters very much. She's been through a lot of trauma. And uh, she she brings sh this guy from the dead, this Victorian man, <laughs> who knows how old he is, and is finally heard for the first time. It changes everything about her, the fact that someone listens. I always pictured Lisa as this like girl who like man repeller vibes, like has no sense of style, comfort over cute, like cute, just be comfortable grandma, and probably wears a lot of her mom's clothes because sh she misses her mother, but just doesn't want to be noticed. She would rather she didn't bring any attention to herself because it's just easier to get through the day if no one even looks at you. I think his inability to speak was what really excited me just technically about playing Creature. Um, and I knew it would be a heavy physical role, so I worked with a mime. I worked every day with him for about a month and a half straight. I have always been fascinated by the Frankenstein story. You know, when I was growing up in the 80s, there were some sort of modern takes on the Frankenstein story, like weird science, but they always seem to be told from the male perspective. You know, what if a man could create, you know, the perfect woman? And I think even, uh, even as a little girl, I thought to myself, okay, well, what would, what would the uh, female version be? And so for me, I had never really had an opportunity to tell a story at that time. And I was like, I gotta do it. That's the nostalgic sweet spot for me. I really kind of uh, dove deep into what was popular at that exact moment as well, if I could. And once we had Catherine too, I think a lot more of that started to come together because you can start fleshing out the costumes and things, and that really, for me, um, helped me grasp the world we were gonna make. Like, between Catherine and Carla, that was like so much of the fashion and the hair and the things yeah. we wanted to approach. First of all, I'm a big Diablo Cody fan, so I was excited to read it for that reason. I will say that in every scene, I, I actually laughed out loud while reading it, which almost never happens to me. And like I said, the script is so strong and so tight, but there is also room uh, for play that both Zelda encourages and Diablo was very excited to see. So I think that the combination of that just made it feel immediately, without ever having to say it, uh, a very organic process. She has this razor sharp wit and, and, and obviously tonally she can vary from something that's much more naturalistic and deeply human, always funny. Um, but with that kind of, you know, the, the, she, she plays this beautiful, like the, every key on the piano. And this one I found to be, so fun and kind of in a totally different wheelhouse with all of those same qualities of something that was so much more heightened. And um, and, and also her kind of, Im just her impeccable eye for the 80s. There were so many things in reading the script that I just was like, I had forgotten about that and I had forgotten about that. The thing Zelda brings to this pro like project is her genuine groundedness. She's so grounded in the moment with me with everyone, that I just feel like nothing I'm doing is being missed. I feel like she's enhancing me and bringing so much to this role with me. And I really do think she's the the love and the heart of this movie. Zelda would give me, I'm sure, as many takes as I'd want, but I'm sure she'd cut me off at a certain point because she knows when she got what she needs. We're dealing with gold here. I really noticed that Zelda picks up on what you're trying to do, and then she pulls it out of you which just means she's watching. She's really in the moment. She's not too far ahead. She's thinking about every little detail and she doesn't miss it. And we always, she always lets me do another one if I ask for a fun one or if I wanna try something. Cause it's so important on a, on, a, on a movie set that's moving really quickly and we don't have that much time to make sure you at least feel the opportunity and space to play because we find a lot of gold. Especially in her age range, I really wanted to find someone that not only could carry a whole film, but could do so with like so much humor and so much kind of uh, willingness to go completely silly. And particularly this being a movie that is meant to be an homage and also take place in the 80s, I wanted someone who was willing to do that. And she was 
the only one I met that I I really just knew immediately. Right off the bat, like she immediately introduced me to her three poodles. And she has a large one, a medium one, and a small one. And they're identical. So she has like Matryoshka doll poodles. And she was such a openly, earnestly sweet nerd that I was like, this works. I have really enjoyed working with Zelda. I hope that we get to create something again. Because I trust her and she's fun and cool. And that's really all you want is someone you can just trust. And I am really um, throwing myself down on this movie. I am doing some crazy stuff, like just embarrassing things that you have to know are gonna be okay. I really enjoyed the dialogue. I think that's one thing that really got me interested in doing this film because it's all very witty and it's just such amazing writing. Like some of the jokes I couldn't get at first because I didn't, you know, not growing up in that time period or like not even growing up here at all. Like I didn't get the context of some of the jokes, but then as soon as like Zelda and the cat, the rest of the cast would explain it to me, it made it a, a lot more sense and it became funny to me as well. So I feel like viewers who watch this movie will get a sense of like nostalgia and they will be able to relate to each and every character. When you're building a set, you can kind of play God and make exactly what you want. But anytime it's locations, which we really lucked out on, like the pink house. Was, oh. <laughs> that's a real house, that someone lives there. We didn't build those things, but you have to find them. And so sometimes you have to be quite flexible. There was a different house we were gonna use first, but they didn't, their HOA wouldn't let us film there very last minute. So we very, very kind of quickly had to put together finding a new house and the pink one is what we wound up with. And it so perfectly suits the film, but you do have to, be ready and on your toes to maybe not have some of that stuff go your way. The high school too we lucked out with because most of the high schools were very like current day high school. And the one we found was so interesting and so different with those big red lockers. Like we didn't paint that. I just remember walking in and going, mm, there's my favorite red, okay, we're good. One of the things that I, I think this movie has is it pays homage to so many uh, fun things in the 80s. So if you were around in the 80s, um, there'll just be a lot of hilarious moments. Um, I also feel that we are in a moment where a lot is being uh, pillaged from the 80s. But what I was gonna say with this is that I find it pays homage beautifully. Um, it, it, it has a lot of fun with the 80s, but it isn't derivative. It is, it is something that is uh, Zelda, um, has a really unique eye, and I think we're gonna get to see a movie that is very much from a singular filmmaker's point of view. You know, Zelda and I have very similar taste in film and television. Uh, and this project is the kind of movie I know that the both of us, when we were children, would turn on first and foremost. Um, you can tell because we're both very inspired by what we're making. We're excited to see the work. We're excited to see the dailies. We're excited to look at how the shots are constructed. I think it's the difference between someone who's incredibly passionate about the content that they're making and someone that's you know, taking a job. Creature was always going to be an interesting part to cast because he's a male lead who doesn't speak. And I wasn't sure how many men were gonna be gung-ho about that. But I've known Cole for years now. We've been really, really close friends for years. And I remember in getting this and being like, oh, this is Buster Keaton as a zombie. I just had an inkling that I think he would have enjoyed the challenge. And he certainly did. <laughs> he was so excited. Yeah, I was so um, enchanted by his enthusiasm from day one. I mean, he really was excited to play this role. The most fun scene, well, Michael's death was a really good day. I couldn't, I come in and I'm screaming at Taffy and I'm like, how could you take my guy? Like, that's one of my favorite lines, actually. My, one of my favorite lines of the movie is, uh, <laughs> and you just give it out like a cheese cube from Hickory Farms. <laughs> and our Henry, who plays Michael, oh, he's fantastic. He's the perfect Michael. He could not get through it. He, as soon as I said cheese cube, he was like, <laughs> And so I'm just yelling at both of them and Henry's just dying laughing and then Cole comes in with his ax like, who is this guy? He's acting like some Frank Sinatra man with his ax. It's so over, I just can't get through it. But my favorite scenes to shoot are with Cole. Creature is a very chivalrous and romantic man and he wants Lisa and he's in love with her. And I think, in, in a lot of ways, he also just wants to have human experiences again, such as like, you know, we see him play the piano. And for me, that was so important, this idea that he had a whole life, you know, before, that he was a composer, 
that he finds so much joy in being able to use his hands again. You know, we all know that life can be difficult, but at the same time, like, we're, we're out here having these experiences and it's a gift. And so for him to have a second chance at that, you have to wonder how electrifying that must be, no pun intended. I can't believe I'm in a Diablo Cody movie. Like, there's just all these movies that she's done that I don't even realize is the same person. And then you read a script like Lisa Frankenstein, and it's not, it's like nothing she's ever done. It's a romantic comedy that happens to have a murderous zombie in it. Yeah. Because horror, I do think it still falls under an umbrella. Horror is a really wide umbrella. There's just nothing scary really in this movie. So yes, does it still fall into the horror world for me? Sure, but those elements weren't even things I had to really particularly worry about. Like that was mm -hmm. Cole being a zombie. That was them murdering some people. Like that was on the page. The tone I ended up pursuing was more comedy and chemistry and the world that we were in kind of having a, not feeling like this world. I did want to make it feel a little bit stepped outside of our day-to-day -day life, even the 80s day-to-day -day life. So I love dabbling in multiple genres, but I don't usually have a choice because <laughs> I have sat down and attempted to write straight dramas or straight horror more times than I can count, and every time it winds up veering into comedy because I just, I can't help myself. Like, I just see the absurdity in everything. You gotta go to the movies, you gotta get your popcorn, you gotta do it just like you would have in 1989, and watch this movie and enjoy the experience of seeing it with an audience laughing together. Mm. And just, that's the, that's the joy of a film like this. Also, Zelda created such a beautiful, bright, uh, immersive film that you wanna see it on the big screen. You're supposed to laugh and have these funny reactions to, these deaths, they're not, they're, they're silly on purpose, they're fun on purpose, they're raucous on purpose. And so seeing that with an audience is kind of the only way you'll get that experience.